Welcome to our eSignal Weekly Forex and Futures Forecast. My name is Jay Norris. I teach trading at Trading University. As always, we need to remind you that trading involves risk of loss and is not suitable for all investors. First market we'll take a look at will be the Australian US dollar. We've been saying for some time now we think you've carved out an intermediate term bottom there. A uh, nice base for a secondary rally, and that's what you're seeing here. This week, you made a higher high. If we drop down to a four-hour chart, you can see it, it held very predictable patterns. It held these nice uh, two-third levels uh, right there, and then again right there. That's the sign of a healthy market. Uh, popping back out to a daily, uh, we think you'll, you'll, you'll see a continuation of that. Uh, up, upside target now uh, you got to extend that oh, upwards of 84 even or so um, we'll have to see you know as always markets are, are data dependent we see that every week too right overall uh, 84 even you know particularly if the Chinese numbers uh, start to improve as uh, orders in the US pick up too so we'll have to see but yeah uh, overall looking at 84 even definitely like that intermediate term bottom that, that it's already carved out here next market the dollar swiss here's the dollar swiss you know holding up pretty good uh, speaking of carving out a bottom and a uh, potential uh, intermediate term trend shifts there you go the dollar swiss you got a nice double bottom in place and more importantly you got a lot of support down below so dollar swiss here stepping out showing some leadership definitely showing some strength so from a longer term perspective, this is definitely something we need to watch. You got a lot of support either side of 90, the figure there. So we'll have to start to keep an eye on this guy in the shorter term charts to see if we have some kind of a, a bullish pattern developing there. But, but this chart certainly bullish. You can see it's holding that familiar retracement in between 0618 and two thirds. And those are uh, those are powerful levels stacking up right there. Next market, the dollar index. Here you go. Here is another market where you're just above support here. The dollar definitely not a benefactor of U.S. economic data coming out. Uh, we had a retail sales number last week, which is just flat, which is just unchanged. We see retail sales numbers having picked up at the end of April, and we see retail sales booming right now in, in the U.S. in May. But you're not going to see those numbers until June, right? And likewise, when you, you go back and you look at April, the end of April, sales really started to pick up in, in the states. However, you had a slow beginning of the month as uh, winter wound down and spring started to kick in. So it averaged out to just a, basically an average flat month in April. So that data disappointed. We think you're seeing good, good numbers in retail sales now in, in stores and, and online, etc., but you're not going to see that data coming out until June. So, you know, you may have a little bit more downside here in the dollar. But again, you start to get into support there. And we think it'll be worthwhile to take a look at the uh, things on a shorter term on those lower time frame charts. Currently, here's our RTT ratio for the U.S. dollar. You can see, yes, the no doubt about it, the short term patterns are down. Therefore, short-term traders would be selling rallies. However, you're, you're getting, you're coming up on the support of those long-term patterns, and those are what really count. And I tell you what, you know what's even easier than forecasting markets? Trading markets, and, and here's what I mean. Here's our own 15-minute benchmark. And you can see as the pattern shifted, if you look at the last month, all we've been doing, all the method has been doing is, is flashing buy signals in the euro, sell signals in the dollar, and you can see that continues to add up. So it, it doesn't matter for us uh, whether the markets are, the dollar's going up or the dollar's going down. When you look at the numbers on this, this benchmark, it just continues to grow. It's kind of humbling because you don't need a lot of input from, from myself or, or anyone else. Uh, just follow the numbers. If the patterns are aligned, uh, trade along with them and, and you get pretty good results and, and along these same lines a contemporary of ours a student at trading university hollis was nice enough to send in his spreadsheet he always sees my spreadsheet on the weekly reports and in class so he said here i want to show you what i'm doing and his is a little more complicated than mine but there's the bottom line look at that he's taking trades on a four hour chart so it's a much smaller sample size because he's his control chart is a four-hour chart. I think he's actually taking the signals on a 60-minute chart, but he's 
basing them on on the analysis on the patterns on the four hour chart uh, the size he trades is also different than mine mine is just a straight two lot every time his is two standards every time his is going to vary based on the risk on the trade so he, he looks to risk the same amount every trade um, so if there's more risk on the trade if, if the stop needs to be further away he trades a smaller position uh, overall he's capturing some more data than I am here's his bottom line though uh, look at that ten thousand dollars so hey not too bad X market will cover will be the euro itself that's the market that Hollis is, is covering trading exclusively and you know that that's fascinating to me I love seeing that where you know you made money in the in the first uh, quarter of the year with the market going down now he's making good money again with the market going up and and that, that tells me he's just following the method and that's the beauty of it here's his spreadsheet again and you can see he had um, some big numbers along the way here count here jump from like 37 3600 to 7000 what's different about his too he he allows profits to run he'll take a profit based on that first profit objective just as I I take He'll actually take half the position off at the first profit objective, unlike the 15 minute where we just take it all off. He'll take a profit, then he'll allow the second half of the trade to run. So that's nice. So you catch some big winners. So it looks like he caught some big winners on the way up here. But back to the markets, back to forecasting what's going on here, you can see a little bit more upside in this guy too. Uh, if they want to stretch that, you may see oh eighteen fifty or so. But we see this market having pretty good resistance right here. Uh, oh one fifteen, a little above one fifteen. So that's going to be a level to watch too. And look at you're at the top of that that Bollinger Band too. So this will be a market that will start to follow on those short term patterns. On the other hand, we just keep it simple. Here's our RTT ratio for the euro. You know, as long as that five and ten are up like that and basically as long as these these bottom three uh the 10 through 25 the majority are up and you take the 10 through 50 the majority are clearly up in fact they're all up all we can do is continue to buy dips so in the end when you trade like that at first you may not like that your opinion doesn't count any longer but when you see these numbers based on just straight the straight market patterns and, and here they are um, you can see the benefit of that so you know what's nice is we we don't get in our own way uh that's for sure as traders so there's no doubt about it you don't have to be bullish or bearish to make money on both sides of the market next market gold gold really flipped the other way just like all these others you know it was a little concerning to me that gold generally is the leading indicator gold lagged the whole way uh it wasn't until all the currencies blew out on the upside that gold shifted the other way too and you know go back to just looking at straight numbers because that's the best way that we know how to analyze it obviously it's most effective from a trading standpoint too yeah you flipped all these shorter term patterns but guess what your secondary your primary your long-term primary they're still down so from our perspective you had a short-term flip you probably got a little bit more upside uh, potentially here in the gold market particularly if you climb if you take out this high if you don't react lower from here in the gold if you climb above that purple line right there you probably got a little bit more upside uh, to go here but you know overall the big picture is is one still of what lower highs lower highs lower highs so you flip gold short term on the other hand you're just you're getting right into resistance here you're getting right into the barbed wire again and from our perspective when we see the resistance holding and then we start to see those short-term shifts back lower that's the time uh, that you want to move on that market from the short side Last market we're going to cover is the 10 year interest rates in the unit. Last market we'll cover is the interest rate on the 10 year note in the US because that's so important to us as currency traders also. You can see you had the nice breakout above that channel above the, the Bollinger Band there. And now you're having a pullback. Potentially you get that pullback into the old resistance. So resistance becomes support. And that's something we'd look for. Look for count on support in in the u.s 10-year rate at around two percent we think you've got a, a nice amount of support uh piling up around two percent outside chance you, you you go down there and test 1.88 again but we we see uh support for interest rates around two percent and then from there what happens look at how you've broken this pattern of lower lows lower highs lower lows lower highs bam you broke it here you had a higher low now you have a higher high so 
we, we see that pattern in the U.S. rates as having reversed higher interest rates on the horizon, and that's going to dovetail with our long-term picture of a stronger U.S. dollar, which, of course, is uh, telegraphed here in our RTT ratio. We see that secondary and that primary pattern still up in the dollar, still down in the euro. My name is Jay Norris. I teach at Trading University. Thank you so much, and we'll see you next week.